ओके जी सो लेट्स जस्ट स्टार्ट विद फंक्शंस लेक्चर टू दिस इज व्हाट वी हैव डन इन फंक्शंस लेक्चर वन वी स्टार्टेड ऑफ विद कंपोजिट we moved on towards the quadratics and we made sure that we know how to make graph and then we worked upon the domain and the range so let's just work upon now starting off with functions lecture 2 now let's talk about inverse now what is inverse inverse is basically 1 to 1 function inverse is basically 1 to 1 function now normally your inverse is possible with linear functions your inverse is possible with linear functions because linear function have what straight line graph involved and with straight line graph when you have one value of x let's say you have x axis and you have y axis and with respect to one x x axis and y axis you have a straight line because it is a linear and on this particular linear you have for one value of x you will have one value of y or for one value of y you will have one value of x so this is one to one function so whenever there is a one to one function inverse is possible so inverse is possible inverse is possible in one to one function only possible in one to one function which you can al always get through the linear function but now the question is majorly based upon quadratics and the quadratics graph is is made through ax square plus bx plus c and when the question is about x is the element of all the real numbers that means any value of x can be taken into consideration at that particular point you need to understand that the graph will always be based upon this is your x this is your y and you can have a curve because of quadratics and when you have quadratics what we can have is for one value of y you will know that you will have two values of x so that means you will have many to one functions or let's say it will not be a one to one function not be a one to one function when it is not a one to one function so that means it will not have an inverse not have a inverse so how is it possible because normally generally we are always told to find out the value or we are told to find out the inverse so quadratic does not have inverse but from that but one point let's say quadratic graph because it is a curve it does not have an inverse but quadratic will have an inverse from one point when question is based on x is element of all the real number question is based on x is all the, x is element of all real numbers one point when question is based on x is element of real numbers your inverse is possible and that point will be your turning point that point needs to be your turning point because from the turning point of your x axis and y axis from the turning point of x axis and y axis now when you have a curve when you have a curve you see this turning point 
will have what? Will have two points, two lines, or I would say. Your one line is this. This will be your increasing function. And this point, before the turning point or after the turning point. If it is after the turning point, it will again have what? One to one function, right? If it is before turning point, it will have one to one function. So that means that the question will based upon what? The question will directly tell you that from x greater than equal to a, greater than equal to a, it has an inverse. It has an inverse. At this point, you will have to find out value of a. Because the question will tell you, the question will tell you that from x greater than equal to a, if a has an inverse, what is value of a? This will be the entirely, entirely based question. What is the value of a? So at this point, you will be looking forward for greater than equal to a. That means you'll be looking forward for this particular value of a from where it is an inverse. For that quadratic equation, your inverse starts from the turning point. Your inverse starts from the inverse starts from where? Your inverse starts from the turning point. So that means at turning point, you have two values. One is h and the other one is k. Basically, your h represents x. Your h represents x. So your x greater than equal to a will basically be greater than equal to h. So your turning point will be the a will be equal to h, which means your turning point will signify that obviously the value of x will be the point where the inverse will start. Your inverse will start from the value of what? x. And x, x will come from turning point and turning point will come from where? Completing the square form. So, if the question sometimes asks you that for fx, write down f inverse. For fx, write down f inverse. Now, you need to understand that fx, when converted to f inverse, you will have to follow three steps. Your three steps are, number one, fx to be changed to y. Number two, make x the subject. Number two, make x the subject. Number three, change x to f inverse of x and y to x. This third step has to be followed in the same step. This third step has to be followed in the same step. So these are the three steps when we need to find out the fx to f inverse. So let's just continue. fx, f inverse of x, as I said, that it requires three steps to be followed. The three steps are fx to be changed to y, make x the subject, change x to f inverse of x and y to x. Since you are doing AS level, you must have studied this in, in your O level as well. Now, let's just work upon your quadratic equation. Now, how do you solve, how do you find out inverse? Normally, you have been given a quadratic equation portion. Now, as I said, your quadratic equation or quadratic graph does not show inverse, does not show or give inverse. So what do you do? You convert your quadratic to completing the square form. You convert to completing the square from from that completing the square form, what you get is you get 
a x minus h whole square plus k, which means you get this form and this gives you your turning point. This gives you your turning point. From this turning point of x, you know that inverse starts. You know that the inverse starts. So that means whenever you need to change your fx to f inverse, you will have to change fx a x minus h whole square plus k form. That means your your equation will be used. Your equation will not be used as quadratic. Ax square plus bx plus c will not be used. What will be used? Your ax minus h whole square plus k. This will be used only because this gives me the turning point. So that means if fx is ax minus h whole square plus k, so what do we need to do? We change your first step is change fx to y, ax minus h whole square plus k. The other step is to make sure that your x is the subject. So your plus k goes on that side becomes negative. Your two, the a that is being multiplied will be divided. Your square will have what under root and then minus h will become what positive h. So if we just write this thing down, which means your y minus k divided by a under root plus h will become x. Now under root is always plus and minus, right? But we need to speak about this plus and minus because only one sign will come. Either it will be plus or it will be minus. This is based on the increasing and decreasing function. But right now, your x has to be changed to what? f inverse of x. Whereas your y to be changed to what? x. Remaining is under root plus h. So this becomes your f inverse of x equation or form. But as I said, that we need to understand plus and minus sign. So when, which sign is going to come? So when x is greater than or equal to a, and when a is greater than what? When the normal, or I say that when x is greater than equal to, let's say, b. And your a is greater than 0, that means you have a u-shaped curve. You have a u-shaped curve. So what do you do? You prepare your, you have an x-axis, you have y-axis. So if x is greater your turning point, you will only be writing down the graph like this. So this will be your turning point. And you know that when x is increased, your y is increased as well. So this is your increasing function. This becomes your increasing function. For what? x is greater than or equal to b. So for this, you will be writing down plus. Similarly, if this question would have been for x less than or equal to b, the same diagram would have been created, but this would have been created for your decreasing function. For that means when your x is increased, your y is decreased. So for each value of x, you will be using as what? Decreasing, decreasing function. And for decreasing function, it is what? Negative. Sometimes you all you need to substitute your domain values to the function so that you know that it is increasing or it is not decreasing. But normally, generally, that is only done when you have a function in the numerator and then the denominator form. So your plus and minus will be based upon the increasing or decreasing function. If it is increasing, you will always write down plus with the under root. If it is decreasing, you will always write down negative with the under root. Now, with this, you need to understand one more thing. The relationship of the fx and f inverse of x. Relationship ship of fx and f inverse of x. 
relationship of these both are it is reflection of point or it is a reflection of point with respect to y is equal to x line. It is reflection of the point with respect to y is equal to x, which means when you have y is equal to x line, if your coordinate of fx are, let's say, 3 and 4, so the coordinate of in f inverse x should be 4 comma 3 because it is the reflection of the point with respect to y is equal to x. So in this category, you need to understand the coordinates. Coordinates are interchanged. The coordinates are interchanged. Your x becomes y, your y becomes x. So that means when your x becomes y and your y becomes x, so you need to understand that your coordinates are interchanged. So relationship of fx is f inverse of x is under the line y is equal to x because it is a reflection. So let's take an example of such thing. Let's say fx is 2x plus 3. Putting down only the linear, since this is linear only, it is not quadratic. So let's just change this changes to y minus 3 upon 2 is equal to x. So can we say f inverse of x is equal to x minus 3 upon 2. So now you have both the functions. Now let's say that fx is 2x plus 3. We took an example of 3 and 4. 3 comma 4, right? Or let's just take 3. Let's take x as 3. We will be getting what the value of this function. So this means if I substitute 3, so 2 into 3, f3 will become 6 plus 3 will become 9. So if x is 3, your y becomes 9. So the coordinate of such thing will be 3 comma 9 when fx is 2x plus 3. So let's just use f inverse of x now. f inverse of x. Your f inverse of x was x minus 3 upon 2. And we know this, that if the coordinate of fx is 3, 3, 9, the coordinate would have been 9, 3. Let's just prove this. Let's take x as 9 and see that whether we are getting 3 or not. So f inverse 9 f inverse 9, this would be 9 minus 3 upon 2. So this would be 6 upon 2. So f inverse 9 is basically 3. So see, with the respect to the fx, we knew that when we substituted x is equal to 3, when we substituted x is equal to 3, we got 9. So the coordinate was 3 comma 9. And when we know that it is in the relationship of y is equal to x, the coordinates will in interchange. So when we used it with the inverse, we know the coordinate would have been 9 comma 3. So but to prove that, we substituted value of x in the f inverse of x because the coordinates have interchanged now. Your y have become what? Your y have become x. So now x will be used as 9. So 9 minus 3 becomes 6 and 6 upon 2 becomes 3. So the coordinates can be interchanged. So that means your fx and f inverse relationship is basically based upon what? Y is equal to x where the coordinates are interchanged. Now, we started off with inverse. We worked upon that inverse is based upon the completing the square form and it, only the completing the square form will be changed. We made sure that we know the steps of the inverse that is fx to be changed to y. We made x the subject. We made sure that we know that change x to f inverse of x and y to x. Then we made sure that uh, the relationship of increasing and decreasing function, that means the increasing and decreasing function 
if it is increasing, it would be plus. If, if it is decreasing, it is it is minus. But majorly, we'll be taking down increasing, decreasing. But we can always see that where to uh, the value of x could be substituted as well. The value of x could be substituted as well. Now, further on, we know that the relationship of fx and f inverse of x is with respect to x, y is equal to x, the coordinates interchange. We proved it as well. We substituted x in fx and we got 9. So we know that 3 was x and 9 was y. We interchanged taking x as 9 now. We substituted in the f inverse function. We got x as 3. Now continuing with the same discussion of the coordinates that were interchanged. So what does this really mean? This really means that when the coordinates are interchanged, let's say your f x was 3 comma 9 and your f inverse coordinate become 9 comma 3. Since it is a relationship of y is equal to x, the coordinates interchange. But now what do we say? We say in function your values of x values of x are represented by domain. We say we call them domain. Your values of y are represented as range. So if we are talking about fx only, let's say 3 comma 9, right? So we would say that domain of fx domain of fx is 3 and range of fx will become 9. But obviously when we talk about domain and range, we talk about the inequality. So at the moment we are just working down for the example sort so that we are clear with the concept. So domain considering that 3 is the domain and the range is 9. So for f inverse of x, f inverse of x, this was 9 and 3. So the domain of f inverse of x, domain of f inverse of x is 9, whereas range of f inverse of x becomes 3. So just to put it in the example, as I said, that normally domain and range are known as the inequality sign where you will have greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, greater than or less than. But here we are just talking about the coordinate itself. So representing to the domain and of fx and f inverse x. So relationship of relationship of domain and range. Relationship of domain and range in inverse. In inverse. So the relationship of domain and range in inverse is that domain, that domain of fx is basically your range of f inverse of x. Your range of fx is basically domain of f inverse of x because your x domain is representation of x, range is representation of y. Your x of fx becomes the y of f inverse of x. Your y of fx becomes the x of f inverse of x. So whenever we talk about relationship of domain and range, we always say domain of fx is range of f inverse of x. 
range of fx is basically domain of f inverse of x. So the domain and range will always be given in the question. We will be discussing them while attempting the question more. But the concept states that domain of fx and the range of is the range of f inverse of x. Range of fx becomes the domain of f inverse of x. So this is about it from function lecture number two. We normally spoke about the inverse in this.